we have about 350 workers working very hard day and night at this time to help us build the largest reservoir that's been built in the United States this century. So it's interesting to see all the different work packages coming together. The excavation down to the footprint of the, the bottom of the dam, getting the plinth and the grout curtain installed, and now we're in the stage where we're starting to initially build up the dam. It's sometimes hard to wrap your head around. It's a pretty substantial milestone for us to have the dam going up. It's pretty darn exciting to be a part of this. The, the scale, the breadth of the project is, is huge. The entire construction window for Chimney Hollow Reservoir is about four years and we are exactly 15 months into construction and as you can see, we've, we've come a long ways. Between maybe a year and three months ago to what it is now, it looks quite different. A quarter of way through this construction project, we are on track to meet our goals to deliver 30,000 acre feet of water to our 12 participants by the year 2025. The water that will ultimately go into the Chimney Hollow Reservoir starts on the West Slope in our Windy Gap project. So we pump water from Windy Gap into the Colorado Big Thompson project. At the Bald Mountain Tunnel, we divert water out of the CBT system into Chimney Hollow Reservoir. And then we make all of our releases from Chimney Hollow Reservoir back into the CBT's distribution systems so that the water will ultimately reach our 12 participants. There have been some questions about building Chimney Hollow Reservoir and filling it with Colorado River water. There have been some issues on the Colorado River as you all are aware of. This is a redundancy for an existing project that we built 40 years ago. This was always planned as a way to make this project more reliable. But some of the things we're doing to improve the river convinced people on the West Slope and some of the opponents of the project that, that it was a good project that the, the mitigation and enhancements that we're doing are more important than the additional amount of water we're taking out. So they are supporting our project now and helping us move forward with things. Given the concerns about climate, storage is probably more important now than it has been in the past. We need to be able to store that water in wet years and have it available to use in dry years. Broomfield's currently estimating a build-out population of about 115,000. So that represents about a 50% growth um, compared to where we stand today. The Chimney Hollow project is, is certainly critical to help foster the, the growth that we're experiencing here in the Front Range, but it being a fully consumable supply that's promoting water conservation, we're able to use and reuse it. And that's certainly valuable to Broomfield for uh, our reuse system and, and to meet our demands and something that I think will provide a lot of value to the participants. So a quarter of the way through this construction project, we've been able to accomplish a lot of things on site. To date, we have nearly finished all of the foundation works for the main dam, including moving 2 million cubic yards of rock and soil out of that foundation area. We've placed the first hydraulic asphalt concrete in our dam. We've now built the embankment about 20 feet up from the bottom of that foundation. We just recently started in the bottom here. Um, that was a major milestone for the project roughly two to three weeks ago. Behind me here, we've started building the actual embankment. It consists of zone one, which is hydraulic asphalt concrete. Zone two, which is a two inch minus rock. Three, which is a six inch minus rock. And then into the shell area, which is just 24 inch minus shot rock out of the quarry. Right now we progress at two to three nine inch lifts a day. There are about 200 asphalt core dams in the world. However, this will be the second asphalt core dam in the United States and by far the tallest. The technology has proven out over the course of 60 or so years so far in terms of what's in practice in the industry. 
dams continue to perform like the day they were constructed, or in some cases, actually better. It's got an asphalt core, we got filter zones, and then we have the rock fill on, on both ends. And, and this all has to work collectively together. From the upstream toe to the downstream toe of the dam is right around 1,000 feet. And the height of the dam from the very bottom is 392 feet. So at the bottom, there's a lot of rock fill to place. In order to prevent seepage through the foundation of the main dam at Chimney Hollow, we're undergoing a pretty substantial grouting program that includes both blanket grouting and a grout curtain. So we're essentially building a 200 foot deep seepage cutoff wall underneath the main dam at Chimney Hollow. That grouting program is now about 40% complete. We are approximately 67% done with all the plinth slabs. The reasoning for the plinth is to have a smooth surface for all of the grouting equipment that needs to be on that to do the foundation grouting for the dam. It also serves as somewhat of a cap for the grouting operation. The plinth also serves as the area where we're gonna attach the asphalt core and from there it goes straight up. The quarry development has progressed to the point where we can now produce all of the rock and aggregates that we need to build the embankment at a production level and operate that quarry as one of the largest mining operations in the state of Colorado. So as of November 2022, we are complete with the downstream portion of the inlet outlet tunnel, as well as the valve chamber. Our inlet outlet tunnel will be used ultimately to deliver water in and out of the Chimney Hollow Reservoir. We're standing at the entrance of the downstream tunnel. Uh, the downstream tunnel is part of the inlet outlet works for Chimney Hollow Reservoir. The total length of the entire inlet outlet tunnel systems is 2,000 feet. So we've been working here for the last six months driving this tunnel. So we're currently 700 feet into the tunnel. So that is 667 feet of downstream tunnel and then 40 feet of the valve chamber. By mid-November, the bridge and the public access roads into the future Chimney Hollow open space will be completed, as well as our saddle dam access road, which is essentially our operation and maintenance road to get to the south end of our property. We've been able to kick off a number of additional features of work, including starting the foundation work for our valve house, starting the spillway, and starting the Chimney Hollow conduit. The Chimney Hollow conduit is about four months into construction and we are at 1400 feet in the ground welded up and partially buried. We just recently completed the Bald Mountain Interconnect tie-in process. And this we call the Bald Mountain Interconnect and this is where we tied into the Bald Mountain Tunnel, the CBT project. The water that we're going to pull off the Bald Mountain Tunnel is Windy Gap water which will be transferred through the CBT project and then right here at our valve vault is where it'll come out and then head down the hill to our Chimney Hollow Reservoir. Well we got started here a couple months ago and got started with the valve vault construction. Had to install the 72 inch butterfly valve inside the vault. The south side of the vault will tie in with the chimney hollow conduit that'll go down to the valve house. Prior to the work that could get started here, we had to go up to Pinewood and install a bulkhead, which allowed us to drain the Bald Mountain Tunnel. So once the shutdown began and the tunnel was drained, we excavated around the tunnel, which hasn't seen the sunlight since the early 1950s, excavated our Bald Mountain Tunnel where we were able to place the Y. The encasements are all completed now over the Y and the 72 inch pipe. So what we have left is just cleanup work and then our backfill process. We have a great team out here at Chimney Hollow between our engineer, our contractor, our construction manager and Northern Water. The relationships that I've built, they're awesome. They love what they do and we all love 
to work and we all work really well together to accomplish the end result. I am Christina Bruckman. I work with Stantec and I am the lead geological engineer on site. Sebastian Trevino, safety educator, Barnard Construction. My name is Zach Remus. I'm a superintendent here at Chimney Hollow. My name is Melanie Wilcox and I am the lead trainer for the haul trucks and I also recently have become the foreman over the water trucks as well. Train when we get the new people in, make sure they're signed off and competent for that truck and oversee the water trucks and get them to where they need to be. Let's see, 11 end dumps, four ejects, six triple sevens, and five water trucks right now that we kind of wrangle around. I do a lot of note taking, a lot of note taking. Once everybody's out of the lineup, I go up, count the trucks that are sitting, ones that are down, one of the, that are up that don't have a driver, and then that gives them a good idea in our three o'clock meetings, and we kind of brainstorm for the day ahead. I've been doing construction since out of high school, so I kind of just found myself getting in a seat and going with it. I've done 740s, 745s, the 775s, and the triple sevens. Little oddball stuff like rollers, skid steers, loaders. It was literally a passion of mine. It never felt like a job. I worked with a couple other superintendents on the plinth here, so mostly focused on uh, the concrete pouring aspect of the plinth. Helped set up pumps, uh, get the pads cleared out for pump trucks, ordering concrete making sure we've got rebar going in where we need to to meet our schedules, uh, just setting our guys up for success every day. Being able to be on their crew and travel around the world and build these crazy projects, it's a real blessing. The ride abutment is a uh, challenge in itself. I mean, 45 degree slope. I've poured some uh, steep stuff, but I've never poured anything that long in that steep. You know, maybe a small pad here or there that's on a pretty steep incline, but nothing of that magnitude it's something i've never done and you know it's i don't know if a lot of people have my name is john thurman we're for stantic consulting i'm the cab manager worked extensively on this project during the design process and this is my first time at the site during construction and putting this down on paper does not do it justice of how uh, immense size this project is just extremely proud to be a part of that process I end up mapping all of the dam foundations and all of the excavations on site. If we have any concerns for the foundation that we need to go ahead and remove any material or get down to better rock. And then as well, I've been in the quarry going ahead and accepting and approving any of the rock for placement within the dam or going through for the crusher for use as the filters and also for the HAC material. For the project, I was actually involved within the investigation, working through the design and now seeing it full scope is very, very powerful. From a day-to-day -day basis, driving around site, making sure we're, we're good with any safety issues out there. The tailboards in the mornings with the guys, getting them squared out. Um, most of our guys do um, English tailboards and then I'll usually come in, mirror one of the other guys and we'll translate it to Spanish, make sure everybody's on the same page because we do have a language barrier with half our force. And out here, it's worked great. Ever since I started translating, I have a lot of guys come up to me and thank me for the translating, relating it to them. Working construction back throughout high school and college and working with people that didn't really understand English. One that fell ended up breaking his leg. He said he wished he would have understood what safety was and they had the proper gear, had that language barrier. So for me, like I wanted to make a difference for those guys and be that voice for them. We have a safe culture out here. At the end of the day, just how you walked in through that security gate, we expect you to walk out the same way. In addition to our construction accomplishments, community relations and environmental stewardship are essential to the project success at Chimney Hollow Reservoir. We work very hard at making ourselves available to the local community. It's incredibly important to us that the people of Colorado understand how important the Jimmy Hollow Reservoir project is to the future generations of Coloradoans. 
Now constructing and operating a reservoir in this setting requires a robust environmental stewardship program, protection of native vegetation, protection of endangered species and sensitive biological resources, research on cultural sites that are encountered during construction, uh, protection of air quality, uh, protection of downstream water resources um, with our on-site water treatment plant. It's a large-scale environmental effort. The Chimney Hollow Valley will be turned over to the public um, as a Larimer County open space after the project is completed. And we take the preservation and stewardship of this land very seriously. The Chimney Hollow Reservoir Project is exactly the type of multi-beneficial water project that I envision in the Colorado Water Plan. It offers critical improvements to ensure water can be stored and made available to participating communities. It joins benefits such as conservation, reuse, mitigating environmental impacts, providing recreational opportunities. Being part of such a crucial project for the region is any engineer's dream. It's great to be out here. It's gonna be something awesome to talk to your kids, grandkids about. Everybody working on this project from the guy cleaning the foundations to a person driving the trucks to someone placing concrete. Everybody should be proud about the work we're doing here. And this is a huge project. It means a lot to the community. It's gonna have an impact in Northern Colorado for many years to come. What we do out here is important. Every little thing that we do, we do for a reason. We want this to last a long time, so it has to be done right.